So Mudbox is going to be the exact same as the stump to, uh, projects that we had done. So in Maya, I'm going to select the model and you can see it's UV'd here. And then I'm going to go to File and then Send to Mudbox and Send as a New Scene. And from there, it's just going to need to think about it. You'll get the screen box down the bottom right. And then if you open up Mudbox, there we go. And so now you'll notice that this model came in. There's no, there shouldn't be any errors on it or anything like that because this UV should be ready to go. So in Mudbox, to kind of start painting on this thing, I will go to, on the top right, let me just make this maximum view here. So in the top right, we kind of start out on the object list, but we want to go up to layers. You have the sculpt side and then you have the paint side. So just for today's tutorial, I'm just going to squ skip straight over to the paint side of things here. So uh, under paint, I'm going to create a new layer, which is this box right here. And I'm going to create a new paint layer. And over here, we want the size. 4096 is a good size, I think. Uh, TIFF, 16-bit floating point RGBA, I've found to be pretty good. And then for the channel, we can set it as a bunch of different channels here, but diffuse is what we want. So we have a new layer here. And as usual, this kind of um, mud box works a lot like Photoshop, where we can paint on a layer. And then by clicking on the slider right here, we can change the opacity of it right there. And we can add layers and stack them on top of each other. And so to start painting on this thing, I'll just go over to Paint Tools. I'll select the paintbrush. So Paint Tools in the bottom left, Paintbrush. And select a color that you want. Remember, you can turn on mirror if you would like, which is right there. So if you don't get this menu right here, make sure you double click on the paintbrush. And remember, a spacebar, just like ZBrush, is the kind of the good shortcut here. And if I paint, it should just kind of go into the model. And so that's the paintbrush right there. There's also the airbrush tool, which I think can be pretty helpful. So I'll just change the color here. And the airbrush is a little bit of a softer brush. If I hold down shift on my keyboard, you see it smooths between the two colors right there. So that's pretty, that can be really helpful if you want to kind of blend colors, holding down shift, as long as it's all on the same paint layer right here, can work for you. Um, one thing I would recommend as well, working on this, is the material right here, the default material, has a little bit of a color to it which is kind of deceiving here. So under the material presets, so under these tabs right here, I might change it to something white or gray, you know, um, something like that. And so now when I paint on the model, I'm getting a little more of a realistic feel for what the colors are actually doing here. So airbrush, paintbrush tool, is what I've shown so far. And then I use the shift tool to kind of blend between the two. I'm going to stay in airbrush here for a moment. And paint up here. So you see it's, it's a little bit of a softer brush. Pencil's a little bit of a harder edge to it. Then the paintbrush. So you see this green right here is the pencil. The red is the paintbrush. So you can kind of see the difference between the marks there between the airbrush underneath it, got the pencil right here where my cursor is, and then the paintbrush here where my cursor is. Then you got the, you, you can erase. Again, I can hold shift and blend between these. And um, dodge and burn works a lot like Photoshop here. So burn darkens where, darkens the exposure of the marks wherever I had painted before, dodge will do the opposite, so it'll brighten it. And if I double click dodge, you can change the size and the strength of it with the sliders. So you can kind of brighten your marks there. 
And then remember as well, we have the projection brush. So I can double click on the projection brush. And when you use the projection brush, remember that you want to use the um, stencil tool. And you can import your own textures here just by adding a stencil and then finding an image. I haven't prepared any textured images, but I'll just select this reference image for now just to help demonstrate that you can import your own image. So I'll just click it. So again, I press projection, then I went to stencil, and then I clicked this arrow right here and imported an image. And I'm moving my camera with the um, holding the option button, navigating around. So with the projection tool double clicked, I'm just gonna try. So that, and then if you press Q, you can hide it. And so <laughs> that's kind of a funny example, but imagine that you have um, like a high resolution skin texture prepared or something like that. And you can just go around and uh, project onto the model here that way. One thing I could do as well, just trying to give a good example here is I'll click on this front view of the box. You can navigate to like a semi orthographic view just by, you see where I'm clicking right here. Let's see if it'll let me do it. Um, huh. As soon as I say something good about, let's see, brush it. It goes out on me here. Um, usually if you click on this, it'll move it to the front view. I kind of locked out when I tried it again. Um, so anyway, navigate to the front view. I'm going to use a projection. And then um, uh, if you hold S, and use the middle button and zoom in and out, I could, for instance, position my reference image in place. This isn't going to be exactly right, but let's just get it as close as we can. And here, I can use the projection tool Oops, I clicked, a, I clicked a button on my stylus by mistake there. So these areas, I was kind of mainly trying to get the eyes right. But you can see here that you can kind of get a start. Texturing your character here. So with the nose, I might need to reposition that a little bit. Oops, I did not mean to scale that. So I'll paint around there. Oh, whoops. I did uh, some edit undos that I did not mean to do there. Um, so I'm making mis some mistakes here. But also, you can just paint over your work if you make mistakes, so it's not the end of the world. Um, so let me try that again with, I'm pressing the S button and positioning this. I'm gonna try this again. So I'm just gonna paint over my work. So I got, I was kind of mainly focusing on the eyes here for this section and I'll get the forehead as well during this first pass. Sure, why not? I'll get the hair as well. Okay, so you can see the nose and the mouth are a little off, so I'm going to hold S and then just do the middle mouse click and move the nostrils onto place. And I'll have to brush out where those eyes kind of get painted onto the cheek there. The idea here it's just to kind of give yourself a starting place. So now I'm going to move on to the mouth. Hold the S. Position the mouth over it. And 
And so this is a pretty low resolution image that I'm using. But you can see there that I was able to get a pretty good starting place with this. Like, especially if this was a higher res image right here, you know, I could have um, some really nice high res uh, skin texture painted onto this thing. And you can see that I was able to get it pretty quick here. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of the main way to paint in mud box here. Um, and just a reminder that when you're done with this, and let's just say that this texture is ready to export, I would just right click here. I mean, I would save this mud box project, right? But um, I would just select the diffuse layer, right click, and then export channel merged is what I would do and um, export a PSD that I would then map onto the model. Here, I'll just go ahead and show that here. So um, I'll export channel merged and I'll put this under source images. Let's just make this a PNG for now. PNG 8-bit is fine. And I will name this um, save so now when I open this in Maya again and I'm going to move back to the Maya classic view and I'll open up the hyper shade and okay I already have a material here, so an Arnold material. So that this renders, I'll just go ahead and just create like a really quick ugly light here just to kind of show you how this will work. So I'll just do a physical sky just to get something in there. So um, what I'll do is open, so I just created a basic light just so that when I render this, something will show up. And in my hypershade view, which again, I got to by clicking this button right here, um, I'm going to press this button just to clear this area and then I'll click the face. So I just made an um, AI standard shader just for y'all's benefit. I'll just start from scratch here. So under Arnold shader, go to AI standard surface right here, click on that. And then it shows up right here at the top. I'll right click and rename that face two and I'll select the head right click on this and then assign material to selection and so what I'm going to show is just how to add that diffuse color onto this is so on color I'll just click the checkerboard next to it so I collect I selected this node right here then went up to the top right next to color I click the checkerboard and then this should, window should come up and you'll press file. And then you can either go straight to this folder right here or make sure if you lose your place, click on this node that I'm circling right here. That's the node where you attach the file. So I'll click on this folder right here. And then under source images, what did I save this as? Let's see, demo head mud box. So you can see what I painted is on there. And I'll press open there. And fingers crossed here. Um, when I go to Arnold and then render, you know, it's a shiny material here, you know, that I need to kind of work on the shader, but you can see that basically the color map got added onto my scene, right? And so I haven't changed the shader at all, still shiny, um, all that stuff. But you can see what I painted got put on to the model. So that's kind of the mud box workflow. And additionally in that mud box workflow, I would go ahead and um, just to kind of fully walk through that a little bit is I wouldn't only do um, just this paint layer. I would also do a sculpt layer and do, you know, again, what we did for the tree where there's like some detail sculpting you can do. Let's just say that we use the um, 
the wax tool, for instance. Let's see if I can find my place again. And I would need to increase the geometry quite a bit here. So I'm going to oh, write edit undo doesn't work in this program. Um, so I would mesh a new subdivision level. I just add a couple subdivision levels up here. I got it up to 108,000. Is that right? Okay, so mesh, I'm going to add another one. So we're at 434,000. So I could even add another one on top of that. And get up to a really high one. My computer's probably going to start struggling a little bit now. Let's see. Press A to focus on your model again if you lose it. And so it's appearing yellow right now because I have it selected right there. So I just click off of it under the default material or something like that. And so here, it's acting a little janky on me here. Let's see if I can get this thing to behave. I'm going to move it down to display level just because my computer is slowing down here. So I'm going to step mesh step level down. OK, so you can see here that this is rough. But you know, I would do, um, I would keep sculpting on this thing. And just keep in mind that whatever I sculpt on this one is going to come through on the model via uh, normal maps. And so in order to export normal maps, I'd refer you back to the, the, the tree tutorial here. But it's just to kind of give you the basic idea. Let's just say I did a lot of sculpting on this thing, you know, kind of especially around these eyebrows, you know, added some sculpture to kind of go along with the detail added in that texture is once that's all done and you've kind of sculpted everything out, you know, exactly the way you want, you just, um, again, I'll refer you back to the earlier tutorial to kind of go through all that, but it's basically, it's under UV maps, extract texture maps, new operation. And that's kind of the path that you take to export normal maps from the head, um, back onto the model.